G'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips for the 15th time. So it's round 14 plus opening round, ignoring the one or two I've missed throughout the year. But either way, we're here to unpack what is coming in round 14. It was once again a tricky round for tipping. Nobody in any of the competitions we had got a perfect eight this week. I myself got four. It was a bad start with the Tigers upsetting the Crows. Uh, the Bulldogs, I also tipped to beat the Brisbane Lions. They didn't really even get that close. Hawthorne, I tipped correctly. I saw North Melbourne beating West Coast a mile off. Gold Coast, I were very close to beating St. Kilda and obviously fell three points short. Sydney overcame a slow start to beat Geelong. I tipped Carlton over everything correctly. And the, probably the dumbest one was Melbourne to beat Collingwood. Um, that was more just a gut feel. And to be honest, they didn't even really get close. And they're in some average form at the moment. So I got four out of eight. And I still moved up 41 spots in the tipping competition. I think I'm like 220th or something now. I'm not sure. But that just reflects how tricky a round it was to get each tip right. So let's go through the winners of all our competitions and our various leaders. In our members competition, we had Marry Me Marcus B with uh, five correct tips being enough to beat everyone else, which is an outstanding effort. So well done, Marry Me Marcus B. Uh, our general tipping competition, the winner was O Laird. And again, no one got a perfect eight, but O Laird got the closest with seven correct tips and a margin of three. That's a very, very good round considering how tough it was. The members tipping leader is now Real Swift with 79. So congrats, Real Swift. And our general tipping leader is still Mystic Dis Pasquale with 81 correct tips. So well done. That's uh, a few weeks in a row there. Mystic has been leading the competition. Our fantasy competition has a, uh, not a first time leader if I'm not mistaken, but still a new leader in Tully Griffiths with an outstanding average of 21.53. Like that's that's really high considering we're in the buy rounds and there's been a whole stack of buys this year. That is um, unbelievable. So well done to all our weekly winners. Let's get into this week's tips. Although before we do, I just want to say thank you to everyone who hit subscribe for the first time on the most recent Just The Tips. We saw some really good channel growth there. I'm aiming to get to 30,000 subscribers by grand final day. And we're probably around about the right rate. But if there's anyone out there who hasn't hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate it if you did consider doing so. So we're back once again with Squiggle. And uh, we'll have a quick look at the ladder. we got Carlton up in second now. Geelong down to fifth. Fremantle still in seventh spot. I think they played one less game. Crows slumped back down to the bottom four. And it's interesting as well, looking at this, this first game, Brisbane versus St. Kilda at the Gabba. If you'd asked me at the start of the season, well, what did I have? I think I had the Lions in the top four, um, but the Saints in fifth or something or sixth. I think that's where I predicted the Saints to finish. Um, and now it's a battle between 13th and 14th. And you think maybe one of these teams has a shot for finals, if either of them. But anyway, let's talk about this game. The Lions were very good against the Dogs. Midfield was fantastic. Locking Neal, 38 and 2. 10 clearances or something like that. A really strong performance and, you know, kind of typical of this Brisbane side who's been a little bit inconsistent so far this year. Well, I mean, 5, 6, and 1 is their record. And their percentage of 116 or 115 there really speaks to that. St. Kilda, by contrast, you know, they've won two on the bounce against, um, you know, a pretty poor West Coast side and against the Suns who struggle away from home. But nonetheless, you give them credit for a couple of wins there and outlasting their opposition. They're a pretty good side at finishing games and restricting their opposition, but not a great side at scoring. So as you can see there with their percentage of 93, which isn't horrific actually, when you consider they've only won five out of 13, but either way, not a strong scoring side. Now, I think there's going to be too tough for St. Kilda here. I'd be very shocked. I know that Brisbane have been inconsistent this year, but St. Kilda have been kind of you know, consistently below average with all due respect. I know they won two on the bounce, but haven't seen enough to really change my mind on them yet. Whereas the Lions we know can play well. And I know they haven't been good at the Gabba this year, but I just, I just don't really think that the Saints have it in their kit bag. So I'll tip the Lions here by 25 points. Western Bulldogs versus Fremantle is, you know, an intriguing game, actually. I, I'm not really too sure how to feel about this one. So Fremantle coming off the bye and more previously to that, smashing Melbourne and looking, you know, very, very good in that game. Far too strong for a very poor Melbourne side. The percentage is sitting at 121. That's actually really good. Um, they're, they're going really well. And, you know, i got to say, it's kind of weird that these guys are playing each other again. You know, the, the fixture is weird. There's so many games that to play, teams will play each other for the second time before, you know, heaps of teams have played each other for the first time. So I don't know how I feel about that. But nonetheless, that's the way this is fixtured. So Bulldogs, up and down, big time. Um, you know, recently well and truly beaten by the Brisbane Lions on their home deck, which was a disappointing performance when you consider the week before that. Uh, their midfield fired and beat Collingwood. 
So again, just an eclectic mix of form this year from the from the Bulldogs here, and this has got the home ground advantage. These two sides did meet last, uh, sorry, a few months ago, obviously. You know, what was it, five weeks ago? And Fremantle got the job done by four goals. The change of venue makes me second guess this a little bit. There's no doubt in my mind that Fremantle have been better this year. But if we have a quick look at the head-to-head here, when you, so round seven, so seven weeks ago, my God. Uh, the Bulldogs then beat Fremantle in 2023 at Marvel. Neither side played finals. Uh, I want to see how Fremantle go at Marvel against this opposition. They did beat them there in 2022. I can't remember if the Bulldogs made finals in 2022 off the top of my head. But we know Fremantle did, and they, they actually finished fifth that year. So that was a good season. And before that, at Marvel, it was a big win in 2019. So not a whole heap to go off there. When Fremantle's been good, they've beaten the dogs there. And when they haven't, they haven't. I'm not too sure here. I mean, I do think Fremantle's the better side, but... I, I just iffy about the Bulldogs. Look at their percentage as well, 114.9 with a team with a negative ledger. Like, it just really reflects the unpredictability of them. You know, I, I tip Fremantle against the Demons. My gut feel is actually saying the Bulldogs here, but I can't quite, oh, I can't really justify it in words. This is a real 50-50, to be honest. Coming off the bye, does that work against Fremantle? I don't know. I mean, it probably does. His history shows that it's hard to win off the bye. Might actually tip the dogs here to make a response. Am I silly? Like, I tip them against the Lions. Fremantle are better than the Lions, too. Uh, I'll tip the dogs here. I'm just going off gut feel. My gut feel has been at a 50-50 percentage rate so far. And I will tip the dogs here. But I don't actually feel good about that. Richmond versus Hawthorne. Two sides that have improved in recent weeks. Richmond had a very... You know, uh, respectable, admirable win is the word over the Crows um, at Adelaide Oval. We didn't expect that. And we've seen a genuine improvement in their commitments and, and efforts. And not to really question their commitment and effort prior to that. But, you know, as the season wore on, the injuries came. You know, they, they dropped their heads. They had a couple of 100-point-ish losses in a row, I think. And have been pretty good since then. It has to be said. Just the one win, but nonetheless, the efforts have been good. Now, they're playing one of the form sides of the competition here in Hawthorne. They've won five of the last six. The beaten GWS, you know, I think the one they lost in the last six off the top of my head was probably one they should have won against the power, and that would have been an outstanding win. So I just think, you know, I don't need to analyze this too much. Hawthorne are red hot at the moment, and this would be a, a massive upset. Even though it's 13th versus 17th, this would be a massive upset if Richmond won. I'm going to tip Hawthorne fairly comfortably by 40 points. No disrespect, Richmond, but I think that just reflects Hawthorne's form at the moment. Adelaide versus Sydney at Adelaide Oval, the scene of the crime last year. <laughs> um, and two teams that have gone in directionally opposite directions since that game. Adelaide, you know, coming off a very poor loss against Richmond. Again, some of their best form this year has been good. Like they've beaten the Blues at Marvel. They beat the Power in the Showdown. Um, and that's just off the top of my head. I reckon there's more. They drew with the Lions. Um, and this is going to be a very stern test. Now, they'll probably come out and want to respond in front of a home crowd. And I think the best version of Adelaide does play well at home. But this Sydney Swan side is that much better than the rest of the competition. And it doesn't mean that they won't have an off day or a form slump. And that could come at any time. But if we're analyzing this on the quality of the two teams, like there's a huge gap between them. You know, there's a big gap between Sydney and the next best, in my opinion. And I don't think they have any fears about playing at Adelaide Oval. Um, having beaten Adelaide narrowly last time, I, I still think it'd be, it's just hard to imagine the Crows, who seem so out of sorts at the moment, really getting too close. So I'll say Sydney win this by 26 points. North Melbourne versus Collingwood at Marvel Stadium. Now, North Melbourne just coming off their first win of the season. I thought it was a really good effort. Um, three quarters where they were utterly dominant, to be honest, even though the scoreline was only five goals. West Coast clicked into gear, uh, as you'd hope. And uh, North Melbourne, you know, being a young side that isn't too used to winning, probably didn't cope with that amazingly well until the last few minutes. They got back into the lead. Um, you know, credit where it's due. It was a good win, no doubt. This is a tough test, though. Collingwood at Marvel. Collingwood, you know, just dispatched Melbourne pretty easily and haven't really done too much wrong since round three. I think they've only lost one game in that time and a couple of draws and beaten some good opposition and dealt with an injury crisis really well. I, I don't really think North Melbourne are a huge chance to win this. I think Collingwood have clicked into a gear and despite missing so many players, I just don't think they're going to switch off for this one. So I'm going to say Collingwood should win this. It'll be a boil over if they don't and I'll say they'll win by 40 points. Sorry, North. GWS versus Port Adelaide. Now, this is actually a fairly good game and, and, and two teams that probably have, have left some wins on the table this year. It just feels like that. Although Port Adelaide do sit eight and four, and if they win this, they should go up into second place. Well, Collingwood's second on the live ladder. We'll get to that. 
Yeah, so this is an opportunity for the power. And the Giants probably just, you know, if they lose this and sit seven and six, it'll be an underachievement in my opinion. So either way, two teams that should fancy themselves internally to go deep into finals and really push for that. So it should be a really good game with clear consequences for the loser, I think. This is a bit of an eight-point game is what I'm trying to say. The Giants fought, fell short against a very good Hawthorne side at the moment. Um, so no real shame in that. And the Powers' most recent game was a six-goal loss at home to Carlton. Again, Port Adelaide are hard to read. Like, it doesn't feel like they're going that well because of some of their losses. Um, but yeah, they sit at eight and four. We know what happened last time these two sides met. Um, or if you remember correctly, GWS were far too good in the finals and knocked uh, the power out in straight sets. This is at a different venue at Sydney. And uh, I think... This is a tough one. I think I'm leaning towards home ground advantage here, but you know, Port Adelaide is a good side, particularly on their day, and they could upset them. I think the power have probably been better than the Giants so far this year, but who knows? Who knows with this Giants side? I feel like they might click in the second half of the year. Oh, this is this is actually a really tough game, and, and one with genuine ramifications for the rest of the year. I'm going to say the Giants win at home. That's probably the only, you know, actually, even if it, if it was in Adelaide, it probably took the Giants. Yeah, I'll say the Giants win this by 17 points, but I'm not entirely convinced. So being a short round, that is actually the conclusion of that round. And, and if I get that tip right, which I'd imagine Collingwood do beat North, and Carlton have the bye, that means Col Collingwood would be in second spot. That's crazy. It's not because I don't think they're good. It's just consider where they were after three rounds and people were like, are they going to play finals? Far out. If they sit second, that's just a very quick turnaround. That would have been eight of their last nine, and I'd imagine they do beat North. Anyway, Essendon's still sitting in the top four. GWS move up to fifth with that win. It just shows the, the log jam there between about, well, I mean, really between second and seventh, and then another log jam between eighth and 12th. This is a really good season, actually, to be honest, for teams in that block. Geelong down in seventh, that would be interesting. Fremantle retain their spot in the eighth, even though I've tipped the doggies there. But if, if Fremantle actually win, they'd actually at least be fourth. So that, that's a big win for Fremantle if they do win it. And I think they genuinely could. The Demons slump down to 11th spot. That is crazy, to be honest. The Lions still in 13th, even though I tipped them to win. St. Kilda, Adelaide, all those teams stay exactly where they are currently planted. So there you go, guys. Those are my tips. Let me know in the comments what you think. At the game of the round, probably GWS and Port Adelaide. I think it obviously two quality sides going up against each other. And it had serious consequences and flow-on effects for the latter as well. I don't really think there's a realistic upset this round. They're all 50-50s or clear decisions in my opinion. Like maybe Richmond over Hawthorne, but I really I really don't think so. Just to maybe say the tip that I'm least confident about is actually probably Fremantle and the Bulldogs. I'm not too sure. Let me know in the comments what you think about that one. Um, and GWS and Port Adelaide is another real 50-50 contest. And yeah, a couple of really good games this weekend. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.